I look at people that have less, less to nothing and they at times have been far happier than I've ever been. Why? They're not snared by stuff. They're not snared by it. Now when you find yourself in that place, you have a choice. You can either reject the wisdom of the Lord or you can reconcile yourself to stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah. You might have made mistakes to be where you are, but you don't have to continue in them. That's right. You don't have to keep pursuing them out of some sense of, well, I've done it all my life, I have to keep going. No, you can actually stop. You can actually choose to stop having stuff rule your life. You want to see freedom? Stop submitting to stuff. And you'll see a big piece of freedom come into your life. Stop worrying about the tomorrow. We're going to get to that next. <clears throat> Verse 21 again, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If you're concerned about your stuff, and that could be your investments, that could be your house, that could be your car, that could be whatever your stuff is, your heart's not going to be to serve God. That's right. Your heart's going to be with your stuff. That thing you treasure. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. That thing you treasure. <coughs> It's where your heart is. You want to know what somebody's really passionate about? What do they talk about the most? If it's air guns, guess what they love? Air guns. If it's computers, guess what they love? Computers. If it's optics, <laughs> I know you used to like optics. <laughs> if it's optics, if it's Walmart, if it's your kids, if it's your husband, if it's your wife, what occupies the majority of your speech? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? Speaks. That's not my words, that's the Lord's words. One of the things, and it's a tough thing, one of the reasons, and this is a little shiny thing, so pardon me. One of the things that I've been trying to do is root out the sarcasm. I've talked a little about that. Why? Because it shows a little window into where my heart's at. Out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. It doesn't go, it's not what goes into the man that defiles him, but what comes out. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> Alright. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body <coughs> shall be full of light. <clears throat> if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and what? Amen. Mammon. Amen. When we were talking about a double-minded man last week, mm -hmm. this is it right here. If your eye be what? Single. 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 If your eye be evil, do you see the difference? It's like love and hate, single and dual, or multiple. If your eye be single, which is what? Focused on who? Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. Seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. If your eye is evil, and he, he attributes evil, if you want to look at this in context, if you're trying to do more than serve God, your eye is what? Evil. He didn't say to his disciples, they that are for me are for me, and those that are against me are sort of like me, but <laughs> he says they're either for me or against me, right? Amen. Do we see any gray area there? No. You know, and I've said with somebody before, well, I have a friend, and, and they were saying they have a friend, and there's, they believe, but they're really not walking it. You know what you call that? Unbelief. An unbeliever. Yeah. Infidel. <laughs> You know, what was the proof of Abraham's belief? Obedience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't obey God to earn his righteousness. He obeyed God because he was righteous. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. You can't serve two masters, can you? It's impossible. Men, you cannot serve your wives and God. Pick one. Women. You can't serve your husbands and God. Pick one. Now, here's the trick. It's kind of worse for you women because by serving God, you will serve your husband. But the point is, you can't serve yourself 
and your husband. You can't serve yourself and serve God. It doesn't, doesn't it though? <laughs> and us guys, we can't serve ourselves and God, can we? No. We cannot serve our needs and do our thing no. and say we do God's thing. Right. It doesn't work. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve your job in the sense of make that the center of your life and forsake God and forsake your family and forsake everything else and say you're, you're following Christ. You can't do it. You can't do it. All right. Verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Again, there is a very contrary statement. Because what are we trained to do? Look out for number one. Look out for numero uno, baby. <laughs> Plan and take account. Uh, and absolutely. Let's make it. Take, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put <laughs> on. It is, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? I mean, we look at the stark contrast of what Jesus is saying to these people and what is being preached in the churches today. Now, are there those that may be in a position like Joseph? Yeah. And even Paul says over in, over in Ephesians, let me just say this, or not Ephesians, in Timothy, 1 Timothy 6. And I have to read it for all screen. <clears throat> verse 17, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. I'll let you pull it up here because I think it's a very important verse. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Yep, 17 through 19. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but what? In the, living. in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. The word communicate is, is, in, is actually the word means give. It means to be generous with what they have been given. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. There are going to be those that are better off than the rest of us. But you know why? They help make up the difference for the rest of us. If they miss that, that's going to be between them and God. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 6. Where are we here? Verses 25 through 34. <clears throat> I ain't ever taken a ride in a car with you ladies. You know, make me stop at every rest area. <laughs> All right, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, and how they toil, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like us, like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of what? Little faith. Little faith. <clears throat> been talking a lot recently about the character and nature of God. We impose character traits on God that He doesn't have. You hear what I'm saying? He says very clearly here that if I've taken care of the grass of the field, which is worth nothing, don't you think I'll take care of you? But see, God says this other thing in His Word. He says He does what to the proud? Resists. Resists. 